Uh, let's bring in Steve Sosnick to talk more about this. He's Interactive Brokers Chief Market Strategist. Um, and of course, he watches a lot of the action, has a front row seat to all of this that has been going on. So, so Steve, how, how important, how material is this going to be to the market? Well, first of all, good morning, Julie. Good morning, Brian. Um, I think this is going to be material, but not, but still somewhat of a sideshow. I guess the biggest question, as you alluded to, is um, who else looks like this? How many other funds look like this? I think this is. I'd be shocked to find that this was a unique structure um, among heavily levered uh, hedge funds, family offices, et cetera. Um, and and so we don't really know. I mean. I, I think there'll be some some attempts to try to fact find what happened. Um, I do think a lot of it had to do with the fact that um, Viacom and Discovery particularly went parabolic um, over the last month. And then, you know, to think that what potentially ended this was the fact that the Viacom board did what they should have done, which is raised which is raised stock offering when it was about a hundred dollars a share. Um, but the but the way the stock fell apart so quickly, um, really, you know, I don't think anybody anticipated that. I think people anticipated it would fall. Um, but you know, you have to think: were these banks? First of all, how did a bank with with five to ten? How did a person, literally a person, it's a family office with five to ten billion dollars, end up with exposures um, that are going to cost the banks way more than that potentially? Um, and what was this guy doing? Was he was he continue? Let's assume he had Viacom the whole way. Um, you have a stock that's been in the 40s for years, and all of a sudden it gets up to to 100. Are you continuing to use the excess margin that's created from from buying the stock from the stock appreciation? Are you then just using that to continue to lever up? And what and the, did all the prime brokers? Um, allow this and what did one prime broker know about the other there is there's if you this is going to be in many ways um a lot like the you know a lot like the inquiries after gamestop although this is going to be a more interesting one because it's not the public it's a very opaque area and a very profitable area of the market Steve, isn't the other problem here that we could see this year more whale blowups like Bill Wong? Because the reality is, a lot of these a lot of these lever trades have been made about made caused by uh, I would argue low rates. Well, you know what? That is starting to incrementally turn around. So a lot of these trades could have, in effect, go the wrong way of other whale accounts. No. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, we think about it. We saw SoftBank have problems. Now, now they're they're. Bigger, but you know, even even in August and, and September, when things were um, going going more smoothly, when you didn't have this rate issue, um, you saw you saw you know them get into a little bit of trouble in terms of their options playing. Um, you know, one of the first adages that I like to think about is never confuse brains with a bull market. And you know, I think right now you've got a lot of people who you know who who are smart people. Um, but who are doing, you know, who are, who, are, who are getting to be inordinately smart in terms of their own thinking because of the amount of, of easy money that's out there, amount of the leverage that's available. Um, and I got to believe that among, if, if I'm a prime broker now, uh, I'm really determining who, who might have this kind of exposure. Who, you know, the other problem is by using swaps, well, let me let me use a little anecdote. On Friday, uh, you know, so uh, another reporter called me and was like, "Who could be doing all this selling?" And, and I was kind of looking through holders lists, and it's not clear whom. You just knew it was, you know, these names in this kind of size were held, according to the to the holdings list, by Goldman Sachs, by by Morgan Stanley, um, by Credit Suisse, but but uh, by Nomura. But you didn't, you you couldn't tell who it was. Um, because he was using, because as you guys mentioned before, he was using, you know, uh, swap trades, um, and you know what that allowed, what that allowed him to do was was effectively because the shares were on the books of Goldman and Morgan, et cetera, um, they were held in street name, not in his own name. So a, you had the leverage from the swaps. B, you basically got around all the reporting requirements that that a fund would normally have if they had positions of that size. Um, so you didn't know who was out there. You didn't know where the risks were. 
Um, I'm going to throw the Buffett quote out there, you know, going back to your original question. You don't know who's swimming naked until the tide goes out. And I think there we'll we'll see how many naked swimmers there are over the, over the next few weeks. You know, Steve, this also brings me flashbacks to the financial crisis, right? This amount of leverage that this guy was allowed to take on, you know, dare I say the phrase shadow banking, like what, you know, how many other people, what is the leverage that's out there right now? What does this reveal about how many other risks there could be? And is there a way of, because it's so opaque, is there even a way of, of understanding it and getting our arms around it? I, it's very tough. I wish I could, you know, I wish I could give you a, a, a numerical answer, Julie, and say, you know, this is the risk that's out there. We don't know. And, and uh, you know, the, the problem is you've got the, the amount of leverage that was allowed via these, these swap mechanisms. You know, you can get a handle on what's out there if somebody is using reg T margin. You can get a sense of what's out there if they're using portfolio margin. But in this case, these were opaque holdings with private contracts um, and, and, you know, and as I think Goldman has learned the hard way is if, if you stop doing business with somebody um, for moral and ethical reasons, it's probably a good reason to continue that. Um, Deutsche Bank had learned that lesson in other regards, and, and yet they're <laughs> somehow affiliated in this one, too. Um, the, there, there's this is this is what I mean. We're going to be hearing about this kind of thing for some time because there, there's there's so many aspects of this that I think we just don't know. And right now, if, but the, my first order of business, if I'm the risk manager at a bank that engages in this type of activity is figure out who else is out there with who else have we lent money to in this manner? And, 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 um, you know, perhaps is it is an appropriate time to cut back some of that risk. And, but what that would mean if you're starting to force people to de lever, uh, that's never a pretty sign either. I, I, you, you're, um, I actually allude this a bit more to long-term capital. You know, if we want to go through our history of market, you know, market blowups, um, you know, the amount of leverage that they had, that they were that they were given by their banks, um, you know, proved to be proved to be enormous and and you know and and threaten the whole system. In this case, we're not we're not anywhere near that, as far as I know. But we, but the but the fact that the banks will continue to just throw leverage onto strategies and, and you know, it, especially when it's a good commission payer, um, that's, you know, these are the types of reckonings that you have to go through periodically as an industry. Steve, 30 seconds left on the clock here. What you're, based on what you're seeing in the markets here in the pre-market, is another blow up like we saw on Friday likely in today's session? Um, not really, Brian, because remember, we've just, as far as the futures go, we haven't even given back the last 15 minutes of what happened on Friday. Though we, we could spend another hour talking about how insane that close was, too, and and and, and the possible causes for that. Um, we discussed gamma squeeze and gamma smash, you know, it, it, as we were talking before. But um, I, I think today is, you know, we're going to be giving, it's going to look ugly because we're giving back an insane rise that we saw in the last few minutes of the day. Um, but then we'll start to unravel all the other all the other elements of this story, um, which are probably not going to be pretty. Steve Sosnick, always good to get your perspective on these types of matters. Uh, Interactive Burgers Chief Market Strategist. Be well, Steve. Thanks.